Hey, Donovan Keith here for Cineversity.com. In this beginner-friendly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create colorful graphic 3D elements that you can layer into your 2D designs and compositions. We'll start by making some shapes in Cinema 4D, give them some colors, add some lights, and then a few little effects to sweeten the image. So here I am in Cinema 4D. In the middle here, I've got my viewport or my view into the 3D world, and I want to start by adding in the ground for my uh, animation. So I'm going to click on this box right here, and it adds what's called a cube object to my scene. And as I look at this cube, I've got these green handles, and then I've also got these tiny little orange dots. So if you click just on that orange dot and drag, you can actually resize your cube. Now, if you accidentally do something you don't like, just hit Control or Command Z to undo. So I'm just going to make a thin little box down here. And now what I want to do is add in a tube object. And this is kind of like a tire shape. And what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit smaller than the box that I just added. So in order to adjust the size of this object, I'm going to use something called the scale tool. So I can just click on this right here. And you'll notice that these handles, or the axes, change from arrows to little blocks. And when I click and drag, not on any of these uh, axes, mind you, but just in space here, you'll see that it resizes up and down. And I want to make this just a little bit smaller than my uh, box right here. Now, to get a clearer sense of what's going on in my view, I want to zoom in a little bit. And I can do that with this arrow right here. So if I just click and drag left to right with this or up and down, it will zoom in or zoom out. Or more accurately, it's going to move my camera closer to my surface here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to give this tube or this sort of tire shape a little bit of rotation. So it looks like it's standing on its edge or, or just falling. So I'm going to switch from my scale tool to my rotate tool. And this is going to create a different sort of axis or manipulator here. And you'll see that we've got different bands. And if I grab this blue one and click and drag, it will start angling it to the side like this. And I'm going to hit undo if I've rotated it a little bit to start, because I want a very accurate rotation. So I'm going to click and drag on this. And you'll see that there's a number that pops up. And as it's moving, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And by doing that, it restricts me to increments of 10 degrees. So I'm going to rotate it so it's 30 degrees right here. I'm going to let go of my mouse, and then I'm going to let go of my Shift key. And you'll also see down here in this little palette something called the Coordinates Manager. It has that same 30 degree value that we just created. So what I want to do is I want to move this object up. So I know I want to go back to how I was moving things, and I did that before with my Move tool. And if I click and drag like this, it does move up, but it's not the best way to work in 3D. You generally don't want to just drag things around in this viewport, because when you rotate your camera, things can be slightly out of place. So I'm going to hit Undo, and I'm going to go to what I like to call the four-way view or the split pane view. So if you just click on this button in the upper right hand corner of your viewport, what it's going to do is show you your scene from different angles. And this guy right here is my, uh, my front view, I believe. In this view, I'm now going to click and drag this up. And I want this piece to just sit. So it's just intersecting the floor there. If you're having a hard time seeing it, it's probably because you're zoomed out. So you can go to View, Frame Default, or Frame Geometry, and it's going to fit all of this. Or if you type Alt or Option H, it's going to do the same thing for every single one of your views. And so now I've got my tube sort of intersecting with the floor. got it sort of lined up right here. I'm going to make a copy of this tube. So I've clicked it to select it. And now I'm going to hold down my Control key. And I'm just going to drag up my, coffee, my copy uh, sort of straight up along this line here. And they're now both oriented in the exact same direction. And this guy, I actually want to have sort of in the opposite direction. So it looks like it's resting on top of the other. So I could come in here and take my Rotate tool 
and grab that blue handle and start rotating and hold down shift like I have done and get it to negative 60 degrees. Or I can come down in here to this coordinates manager and if it's 30 degrees, I'm gonna type in negative 30. If it's negative 30, I'm gonna get rid of the minus sign. And now it's rotated the exact opposite of the one below it. So I now just wanna move the top one so it's resting just on the bottom one. So I'm gonna take my move tool and I'm gonna click and drag, again, not on the axis, but just in space here. And I wanna get these corners to just sort of barely intersect. So I'm gonna go back into my perspective view and I do that by clicking on this split pane button in the upper right hand corner of the view that I want to go into. So now that that's there, I've got a floor, I've got a base, I've got a top, and I want to give these some color, make them a little bit more interesting. And for that, we've got this thing called the material manager. And so a material is something like concrete or water or glass, just a different substance that something can be made out of. So I want to go to create new material and it's going to create a simple basic material with a color. You can, you know, set that color to whatever you want and you can then apply that to your object. Now I want to be a little bit more specific about this. I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to go to my material here and I'm going to go to this icon right here. This is my color wheel. And if I drag this palette up, so I've got a little bit more space, I can create a custom color palette, which you'll see down here, based on what I'm doing in this color wheel. So I'm gonna go to this, the Tetrad, I guess is what it's called, but it's, it's basically four colors that have a, a pleasing relationship to the eye. And I'm just gonna click and drag this around until I get a color scheme that I like and yeah, I think I want something with a bit of purple, a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, something like that. And now I'm gonna take this group right here, this little folder, and drag it to my material manager. And what that's gonna do is create four new materials for me from these colors. So I don't have to manually create each of those materials. I'm gonna click on this first one because I'm not using it, hit delete. So for my floor, I think I wanna use this dark purple material. I'm gonna drag it onto my floor. Next, I want an alternating color, something that pops. So I'm gonna grab this red and drag it onto this bottom piece right here. And then up top, I wanna to have uh, something harmonious with the bottom, so I'm gonna add in that blue up top. And then just to give myself a more interesting background color, I'm gonna create what's called a sky object. So you press and hold on this floor and you choose sky, and you'll see that the background is now sort of this uh, blue-gray. So I'm gonna grab my yellow and I'm gonna drag it onto the sky and you'll see that it is now yellow. And so if I press this middle button right here, uh, it's called the render button. It is going to render my viewport. So I now have a nice looking color scheme. I've got some simple shapes in a fun arrangement and I wanna add just a little bit of lighting and shadows to make this look even better. So in order to do that, I'm going to add what's called an infinite light. And infinite lights are kind of like the sun in that they are sort of coming from infinitely far away or, or pretty close to that. And they uh, cast a nice, really hard shadow. So when I render this, we've got this very dark looking scene, not really perfect. So I'm going to take my light here and I want to rotate it so that the angle of my lighting changes. So I'm gonna take my rotation tool again, and this time I'm gonna grab my red handle. And as I do this, you'll see that the shading on the objects changes a bit. So I want it to, I don't know, maybe around 45 degrees, something like that. And now I'm gonna press my render button again and see what this looks like. So I like how this has affected the shading of my objects, but what I'm missing is, is a shadow to really anchor this to the ground. So to add shadows, you don't have to paint them yourself or do anything like that. You just click on your light object and you tell it to paint in the shadow. So you just change your shadow here from none. And I'm gonna choose something called an area shadow. You don't need to know much about it beyond it's a really good looking shadow, although it is a little slow to render. Um, so now we've got a nice looking shadow right here. 
And we also have these really, really dark regions. So I just wanna brighten those up a little bit. And the way I'm gonna do that is by adding what's called an environment object. And an environment object allows you to add fog to your scene or just to add a fill light that applies everywhere. And it's really good for simulating light from the sky. So I'm gonna set my environment color here by clicking on it to sort of a light sky blue. And the easiest way for me to do that is to click on this K for Kelvin, which is how light temperatures are often measured. And I'm just gonna sort of grab something over in this little blue area, choose OK. And I'm gonna adjust my environment strength and you'll see that it's brightening up my scene. And then I wanna provide sort of a counterpoint to this. So in my light, in its color, I'm gonna click on that K for Kelvin and I'm gonna shift it slightly towards orange or yellow. So now I've got this nice sort of combination of warm and cool lighting. And this right here is already a pretty cool looking image, but I wanna add just a couple of effects to really sweeten up the look. So to do that, I'm gonna go into my render settings right here. And in my render settings, I have the option to add in some effects. The first effect that I wanna add is something called ambient occlusion. And what it does is it just sort of paints a little bit of uh, shadow in any of the creases in my scene. So if I render this, we'll see that inside of this tube or this hole right here, it darkens up. Inside of this tube or hole, it darkens that up as well. And then we get these nice, really soft shadows down here by the base of our object. So ambient occlusion is a really nice way, especially when you're using something like an environment or a universal light to darken things up a little bit. Okay, last but not least, I wanna make this a little bit more techy, uh, sort of like 80s Tron looking. And to do that, I'm gonna add what's called the cell render effect. And I'm just gonna go to effects, cell render, press this render button again. And all of a sudden we've lost all of our color, but we have these little outlines of our shapes. So I wanna take advantage of that. I'm gonna turn my color back on, give that a render. And now I've got this single pixel outline around my shape. But if I want, I can also turn on edges. And that's gonna draw a line for each of the polygons in my shape. And this is very similar to a viewport mode in Cinema 4D. So if I want, I can go in here and change my display setting from garage shading to garage shading lines. And that's gonna show me all of the polygons or the, the, the rectangles and the triangles that make up these more complicated shapes. And one of these guys, the cube down here, has just one segment or one rectangle per side. But if I want, I can increase the number of segments or sides here to something like four on X and four on Z, which is sort of indicated by this direction right here. So when I render again, we now have a slight grid on the block, a slight grid on each of these tubes. So I hope that that was fun and, and shows you that 3D doesn't always have to be scary. You can create some really great, pleasing images with very little 3D knowledge using just really just a, a few of the buttons that are available. And I'm using Cinema 4D Prime. I, I highly recommend downloading the Cinema 4D demo or downloading After Effects through Creative Cloud and playing around in Cinema 4D Lite. See what you can create. All right, thank you very much, bye-bye.